his prompt word was flowing, I believe. I'm pretty sure it was flowing. So it got me thinking of like water and stuff. And I ended up deciding I wanted to attempt to draw Storm from the X-Men with just like rain coming down. Uh, we'll see how well I execute it. I've started on a sketch here. I'm going to do a little bit more um, touch up right now. I think I've got in mind how I want to approach this. Um, anyway, thank you all for uh, watching. Let's see. Hello, Spider Boy. Thank you for joining. Uh, so, yeah, trying to get off on a little bit of an earlier start today and uh, see where that takes us. I'm drawing Storm in her classic costume, which I'm pretty sure was designed by Dave Cockrum. Um, so, you know what? Let me uh, switch over to my, my handy dandy brush pen. I'm going to bang out a couple outlines here. Uh, I'll try to try to do this the right way by moving downwards, pulling, pulling the pen, not pushing. Gives me supposedly better control. certainly allows me to see my drawing a little better. So I hope everybody out there is doing well. Uh, today is my one day off among like working five days, then one day off, then back to work for five days. Uh, wow, okay, a bunch of people just joined the chat. Let's see. Um, hello, Germ Germ and Jack. Kevin Maley, nice to see you again. Thank you. Kiro, always nice to have you here. Josiah, J. Andrew World. Oh, even my cat is joining us. Tardis Rider. Yeah, uh, let's see. Tardis Rider says Dave Cockrum, the designer of this costume, was the first pro he ever met. That's awesome. Uh, DC Big Oso Ya. That's an interesting name. Uh, so there's my cat that I said wanted to join us. <laughs> this is Chibi. And uh, Chibi is my kitty that um, had a, a seizure um, a few weeks ago and was a big inspiration for me deciding to do this um, uh, live streaming because uh, I, I, I wanted to make some extra ad revenue to uh, because she has had doctor bills that added up to quite a bit, didn't you? Anyway, um, apparently she wants to say hello. She's a real cutie pie and uh, I'm gonna put you down now little girl I gotta draw and talk to people do you understand she doesn't get it I don't wait a minute you're not that smart did you even go to college oh bless you she just sneezed all right hello Shirley uh, Kitty's already doing a lot better. She, she's, she's doing great. You know, it's too bad that she had her seizure, but she's, uh, she's doing very, very well. Um, and in fact, we're not sure yet, but she may have actually gotten over her diabetes. She may have actually, she may not need insulin anymore. We did a, uh, just today, we took her to the vet and we did a, a spot check and I'm waiting to hear back. So she might still need insulin, but might not. That would be, that would be lovely if she didn't. And if she does, then that's just uh, back to the status quo that we've had for, oh, over a year. So no big deal there. So, uh, yeah, let's see. She's a great kitty. I'm glad I got to show her off. Oh, VV says, hello from Finland. I'm drawing at the moment some Venom Eddy stuff. It's 3.24 a.m. Well, that is late. Uh, wow, where in Finland? Is it closer to like Sweden or Russia or like uh, north, south? Just curious. Uh, Ashamish art, uh, am I, wait, did I read that right? Ashmish art. I just want to let you know how much I enjoy your channel. That's so nice to hear. And B. Dan Riley is, is here. Folks, thank you. That's so wonderful. Um, boy, I have been just getting some really horrible comments by some people that don't really watch my channel. Uh, all, all over Twitter today. So that's actually really nice to have some uh, friendly words. Um, try, I haven't responded to any of what I've seen uh, on Twitter today. Uh, just sort of strikes me as kind of 
some mean-spirited uh, comments, uh, but I don't think they really understand what I do with my show, so I'm trying not to take it too personal. Uh, anyway, don't worry about it. That's that's my deal. Uh, oh my God, Kevin, that's so generous. Thank you so much. What a what a super chat, super chat. Thank you so much, Kevin. That's that's just amazing. Uh, Kevin's uh, a good artist too, as I recall. Didn't you draw something for? Um, when did I see some of your art, Kevin? I, I feel like um, I saw it somewhere. Did you ever draw maybe like a, a title card for Hooded Cobra Commander? I feel like I saw your artwork, if, I, if I'm remembering correct. But I can't, off the top of my head, remember where I would have seen it. Um, but I feel like I'm remembering right. Uh, VV says, West Coast, okay, of the North, so closer to the Swedes. Cool, interesting. Have you ever worked with India Ink with brushes and dip pens? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, you sent me Comic Tropes fan art. I'm sorry, Kevin. I'm like, why did I know he was an artist? It's You sent me an amazing piece. It was very realistic. That was the style. Um, I love it. I love it. I, I totally remember it now. It was like right on the edge of my mind, one of those things. Uh, somebody asked if I ever use India ink. Absolutely. I've got some. I've got a brush. Uh, don't use it as often. Um, I should. I've got it here. I'll probably do do it one day. I'll probably do it one day. Ah. Uh, okay. Back to the back to the work at hand. I'm going to bust out a technical pen for this cuz I'm going to try to do some of Storm's features and uh I need to have a very small delicate touch. Okay, here I go. I'm not going to talk too much because I'm trying to do a very delicate line here. Women are tricky because you want to have nice, bold, long, confident lines and every extra line you need to add is going to make her look older. Um, so you can't always necessarily go full realistic unless you're going to use uh, cross-hatching techniques throughout the entire piece to represent different areas of light and darkness. Can I come hang out with you and draw too? Yeah, Chrissy, come on in and draw. It's my fiance. She's calling and she's, she's following this in another room in the house. Yeah, come on. If you want to draw, that would be great to have you. I love drawing with other people. I don't know about y'all, but, um, I don't find that a distraction, you know, because mostly when you draw, you tend to be a little quiet, actually, I would say. Um, maybe like listen to, to uh, news, music, commentary tracks, things like that. Just like spoken word tends to work very well when I'm working. A bunch of new folks have joined in. Um, I haven't seen Venom, Germ Germ, so I don't have anything to say about that. Uh, sorry. Let's see, Christian Tell says, what are you currently inking with right now? I'm trying to learn about getting into inking, but I don't know what materials I should start with. Um, don't necessarily use the tools that I'm using, but a lot of uh, artists will use uh, these Pigma Micron technical pens when they're maybe just doing a sketch at a convention or something, um, and as well as things like uh, maybe like um, a brush pen. So those are some of the tools that you can sort of work quickly with, but they're not necessarily going to produce the best results. You can definitely control your line better and end up with a darker black if you use like inks and brushes, things like that. Oh, wow. Another super generous uh, super chat. David Deister. Am I reading that right? Yeah, it looks like David Deister says you should check out Christopher's comic book hut where he tells us what's going on in the comic industry. He has names for everyone, including Clueless Joe Casada. Interesting. I've never heard of that. Is that Twitter? What you're saying? Follow Christopher's Comic Book Hut, and I have to admit, I, I'm not aware of that one. Uh, wow, Lion Man's here. Um, they were just busting balls on Twitter. Uh, I think overall it'll get you more subs. Yay. 
like I said, I, I wasn't responding to it. Uh, you know, it seemed a little mean spirited to me, but I, 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 I just punched out really quickly. I was just like, well, even though I'm tagged in this, this isn't for me. So I just uh, muted the conversation. Uh, Jack Kirby used to listen to the news. That's interesting. That's really interesting. It's a YouTube channel. Okay, David Deister says that the channel he's recommending to me, and I'll read it again since he did, you know, send me a super chat. It's called Christopher's Comic Book Hut. Well, I'm not familiar, but um, I guess I'll have to check it out. Thank you. My friend from D.C. My, I say that like I've only got one. Uh, I've got a friend uh, from the D.C. area, and his name is Troy Jeffrey Allen. Uh, and he's always sort of worked in like the uh, indie comics world. Uh, he was part of a group of uh, comic artists that, that we formed in DC. We would meet like uh, at least once a month. We would self-publish uh, anthologies and stuff like that. Um, anyway, Troy Jeffrey Allen just launched today uh, a YouTube channel. Uh, he works for Previews. They're the Diamond Distribution, which I talked about recently. Anyway, he works for them, and uh, they have started a YouTube channel, like talking about just the newest stuff. And um, yeah, I think that Troy's a really smart guy, and he definitely knows his stuff about comics. So if you look up Previews World, uh, there's a new show online that uh, he co-hosts. And uh, yeah, I gave it a watch today, and I thought that he did a really good job. So uh, if you're more curious, you know, obviously my show... I jump all over throughout comic book history and different publishers and stuff. Um, Troy is talking more about, you know, what's what's about to come out, what what's coming up in the future. And they do because of working for previews, they get access to uh, interview various uh, professionals, which uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Cat just walked in. If you heard that door squeak. So I feel like the thing that I'm going to have the hardest time with on this drawing is Storm's headdress, which was really unique. I loved how it looked. I don't feel like I've ever quite gotten a full grasp on exactly how it's supposed to look. So I'm going to do my best, but we shall see. Um... Okay, a bunch of stuff uh, was said. I'll try to catch up on at least some of it. Art Berserk is here. Thank you. Um, thanks for the recommendation. Oh, that's to somebody else. Okay. Uh, B. Dan Riley says, has there ever been a story in which Wolverine became a werewolf? Uh, no, he's never become a werewolf. There is a what if issue where he became Lord of the Vampires. And there was a uh, the Cap Wolf, Captain America story where Captain America became a werewolf. And that supervillain was also gathering any sort of um, uh, superheroes that had uh, not just like werewolf abilities, but like, you know, were like really in touch with animalistic type powers. And, and that included Wolverine. So Wolverine was in that story and almost treated like a co-werewolf with the gang. There were a bunch of characters in that. So that's the closest I can think of. But I don't think Wolverine has ever been in a story where he flat out was... A werewolf but he was a vampire once is that my other cat that's my other cat my other cat is, is in here all right my cats like me today that's nice let's see will cap wolf be doing any more stand-up comedy this october uh don't think so don't think so but i do have some interesting horror pieces i'll be uh discussing this month um it's a little warm i'm taking off my sweatshirt i did not expect it to be warm today all right all right uh shirley says hello to you hello shirley uh, no all right jojo says in earth x he was revealed to be of a more animalistic species yeah um that's right and in fact um didn't like one Wolverine storyline imply that he was almost like a mutant Wolverine instead of a mutant human? Um, that he had like a heritage of like uh, people that had, I mean, animals that had evolved. Uh, I think so. Not it wasn't. It was quickly disregarded. 
let's say. <laughs> what about Feral Wolverine when he lost his nose? Yeah, well, in my um, bad comic book costume episode, I did discuss that because that was not such a good look, in my opinion. Not, not so good. What I just realized is um, I sort of drew the storm and I'm not clear on where on her arms her her sort of costume goes so I'm actually gonna have to take a moment to look up Dave Cockrum's costume because I just realized I don't exactly know her full costume I just sort of sketched out a body started laying in a bunch of details okay it looks like her arms are not covered but are her shoulders this is this is tricky this is tricky to figure out let's see is there anything is there anything that shows us exactly what her costume was looks like usually her cape was over her shoulders but in my pose it really wouldn't work like that i don't think well i guess technically it might hold on let me bust out my pencil Ooh, got some uh Weird sunlight on my face there. That doesn't look cool. Uh, no Hurt Feline asks, do I have any guilty pleasure films that are comic book or video game adaptations? Yeah, I kind of like the uh, the first Resident Evil. It's uh, it's not good, but I do kind of like that as an adaptation. I'm trying to think of like other guilty pleasure um, choices. Um comic books let's think anything for comics that like isn't well reviewed maybe but that I like uh, nothing I can think of off the top of my head I mean I probably watched just about all of them but uh <laughs> off the top of my head I don't have a good idea unfortunately I'm gonna go like this I'm thinking Storm's costume through here, bear with me. I'll just do something like that anyway. All right, that'll work. The Daredevil film is one of my personal favorite guilty pleasure comic films, says B. Dan Riley. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I... There's a lot of bad stuff in it, though. Like, I, I tried... Like, it's entertaining in, in spots for sure. No question. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, Colin Farrell's pretty over the top in that one. <laughs> That's okay, though. Uh... I still okay we'll go with something like that yeah that'll work that'll work so anybody else out there uh, draw today for inktober or or any reason really uh, or drawing right now. I know um, VV said that uh, he or she is drawing right now. Don't want to make an assumption, VV. Emmanuel E. says, I love Storm. Uh, Joseph Meager says, love the Mohawk, Morlock Storm. That was a fantastic look. It really was. Um, somebody talked about like uh, that this is shoulderless, so I think I did this right. 
Um, you know what? I'll just I'll just draw. Uh, let's see. Oh, Kevin Maley says I'm drawing right now, not Inktober related stuff for a new YouTube series I'm working on. Ooh, anything you can tell us about, or is it a little ways off and you want to keep it close to the vest? Uh, I'm curious. Drivel is working on Inktober number nine, and hopefully we'll get to number ten. Hello, Quinn. Hello, Brendan. Lots of people joining. Sorry, I can't uh, catch up on every single one. Let me um, let me draw for a little bit. Um, let me think if I've got any sort of stories worth telling. Let's see. Do I have any any sort of stories worth telling? Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, so I'm thinking of uh, storms, right? And uh, when I was, uh, I went to college in New Orleans. And after my freshman year, um, it was the end of the, the, the school year, and I planned to go back home to Massachusetts for um, a month or two and, and, and work. So... Um, I was going to fly back and had a rental car and took most of my clothes, books, music, think comics, and it was all in like, you know, the, the rental car, checked into a hotel because I was flying out first thing the next morning. And that night there was a tremendous thunderstorm and New Orleans floods very easily because it is below sea level so all of the um, all of the rainwater actually has to be pumped up uh, and then pushed out you know to sea or whatever so uh, it was coming down and I was just like watching that night going like wow this is amazing you know I'm seeing cars pull up onto a medium New Orleans is very flat so it floods very very quickly and easily uh, if it's a massive thunderstorm and uh, I was just like, wow, that is something. Well, we'll just see how things are in the morning. Hopefully my flight's on time. And uh, in the morning, you know, uh, flight was, flights were running okay. The airport was uh, protected against floodwaters with various dams and stuff like that. And it's a little further out from the city. But the area I was staying in flooded badly. The, um, the rental car was uh, a total loss. I mean, like it was waist deep water, right? that that's how bad the, the storm was and uh i went out to the rental car repeatedly just to get all my stuff that morning i'm wading through the water and you can't see through it it's just like murky brown water and what i didn't think of at the time what i've since thought about is that uh there are a hell of a lot of critters in new orleans and that's before it rains gators, uh, nutria or rodents that are local to there, all sorts of snakes. You know, basically a lot of vermin and a lot of like reptiles and lizards and stuff like that. And I'm just going out into this water that I can't see to say nothing of how polluted it probably was and getting like my stuff, which was already like ruined. So what was the point? And I didn't get sick and I didn't get bit or step on anything weird or anything. But in retrospect, I look back and I'm like, how lucky was I? Like, that was just really foolish. And, and it's just the kind of thing you kind of do when you're younger and you, you, you're not thinking it all the way through. Um, oof, I'm just so glad. Like, there easily could have been a snake in that water. there Because there probably was. And it just didn't happen to get me. So... In some ways, I'm lucky, but that was a really big storm, and I did lose, like, all that stuff. So, like, my comic collection for the longest time just had this year-long gap. All the comics that I'd collected in that year that I was at college got ruined in the flood. And uh, so, yeah. Are any of the snakes there poisonous? Tons! <laughs> so, yeah, that was dumb. That was really dumb, but um, I was lucky. I was lucky in some ways, but like um, that actually started to sort of curb my interest a little bit in comics at the time, just because I I was a regular reader and I lost, you know, like I had this year long 
gap in my collection that was really intimidating to think about replenishing. And, and it really made me think like, well, not everything I read do I really even want to replace. Um, so it sort of just got me thinking about it in a different way, actually, at that point. Um, the one thing I, I liked at the time that I was kind of bummed that I lost was uh, like all the Age of Apocalypse stuff. I, I liked that at the time. Anyway. Did I watch the Dark Phoenix trailer? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it might be okay. I don't know. I wasn't. I didn't like the last X Men movie. What one was that? The, the Apocalypse. Oof. I wanted to like it, but that was not so good. Anyway, um, what are people talking about? Uh, something. Uh, did you see a fire ant raft? Someone asks about the. Uh, uh, flood. No, I, I didn't encounter that. Didn't really encounter much of anything, but uh, could have. Um, yeah, fortunately, I guess I was sort of far enough away from the levee and the bayou and stuff like that, that like I wasn't as likely to encounter some of that stuff. But um, yeah, New Orleans, I love New Orleans, but, you know, it's as close as America has to an area like um, Australia and uh, Australia like you know there's scorpions there's spiders there's snakes all the like you have to knock your shoes every morning if you want to be careful right you have to just like think things through in, in Australia and you sort of have to do that also in New Orleans like there are you know cockroaches everywhere and stuff like that oh cool uh, uh, let's see this is it, it's it's a super chat and it says a before that does that stand for Australia because it's still got a dollar sign uh, oh you're in Australia just as I talk about how dangerous your country is I say that but like honestly I want to visit Australia so badly uh, since you're uh, paying attention here nipper 80 where in Australia are you I'm super curious um, I would really really love to visit Australia sometime soon um, and I'm, I, I obviously like everybody talks about going to like <laughs> Sydney and, and that's a, that's definitely a possibility, but, um, I'm trying to think of like other cities that I might have, um, a good time in or like, you know, experience some good food or older culture or something like that. Good day is good day six. Good day. All right. So. At the risk of completely isolating my Australian fan, I'm going to try my best right now to do a perfect, a perfect Australian accent. And I'm going to say, um, I like that hat, mate. I'm going to say, uh, so I'm going to go, uh, I like that hat, mate. I like that hat, mate. What do you think? Is that perfect? Did I just nail it? <laughs> Probably not, but I'm trying. Uh, Adelaide, of course. I've heard of Adelaide. Uh, I've heard that it's quite beautiful down there. I would love that. Uh, I would love... Yeah, Melbourne is, is recommended too. Okay, perfect. I got it. Yay. <laughs> Thank you for being a good sport. Um, well, hey, I'll, I'll, if I ever am lucky enough to visit Australia, I'll make you know an announcement on the channel so that if I've got uh, any uh, fellow comic book uh, enthusiasts down there maybe we could like you know meet up or something um, but you know I don't have any plans right now but I'd announce it just in case uh, oh you didn't know that I was from Australia yeah yeah me mate that's weird why would somebody be ringing our doorbell yeah it's probably just some kids trying to sell stuff Quinn says that he is literally watching Crocodile Dundee well Paul Hogan is as Australian as they come. It's not a knife. What it, wh why can't Thor just be Australian? It's not like the Asgardians in the Marvel uh, movies are really portrayed as being, uh, you know, Nordic. So I'd say just go ahead and let Chris Hemsworth use his natural accent and we just have a flat-out Australian Thor. Why not? Why not? 
Uh, any more impressions or accents in your arsenal? Yes, it's completely unlimited. I can do an impression of literally any celebrity. Any celebrity. Um, I saw a question. I think it was from Jay Andrew World. It's moved up. He said, any embarrassing stories of meeting comics pros? Um, probably a bunch. The one that strikes me right now is, is recent. So, well, semi-recent. It was a year ago, almost to the weekend, and I was at um, New York Comic Con. Uh, it was actually the day before the Comic Con, and my fiance and I were simply walking down uh, the Manhattan streets doing, you know, doing stuff. And I saw Todd McFarlane, who, of course, I recognize, because, you know, Todd McFarlane's a big superstar. And I had seen him, actually, as a kid at a convention in Boston when I was, like, maybe 13 or something like that. So I, I knew who he was, and I'm seeing him, like, walk down the street, and I'm, like, all amazed. I'm, like, oh, cool, it's Todd McFarlane. And uh, so, like, I, but I only notice him when he's fairly close, and I look at look him, and, and he happens to look me in the eyes. I mean, it, it's a lot of people on a New York City street, but he happens to look me in the eyes. And so I just go, oh, hey. As though I know him, or as though he knows me. And so he's just sort of like, you know, awkward smile, like nod, like, who was that? And he's probably thinking to himself, like, did I, like, work with that guy sometime in the past? Like, he, I don't know, maybe he gets that a lot, like, at least at Comic-Con time, right? I, I would imagine several big superstar guys sort of get recognized. But I didn't just go like, hey, Todd McFarlane, I'm a fan of your work. I was just like... It was so brief, you know, we're walking in the opposite directions, and I noticed him at the last minute, and I'm just like, oh, hey. <laughs> hey, it's me. Todd, buddy, Bubba. Audio quiet, anyone else? Yeah, the the, the, uh, the audio it tends to be a little quiet right now. Um, this is an okay mic, not a great one. So, all right, back to back to drawing, right? Well, that's that's the closest I can think of right now for an embarrassing story of meeting a comic book pro. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that one works for you. <laughs> uh, it's definitely one I remember. <laughs> what was the first convention you ever went to? Oh, that's an interesting question. First of all, I definitely don't remember the name of it. Uh, but it was in Boston, because that's basically the area where I grew up, was near Boston. And, um, yeah, it was just at, like, a, uh, you know, like, something along the lines of, like, a Marriott that had, like, a really massive mezzanine. Um, and um, so I don't remember what it would have been named. Um, I know that, like, one of the celebrities that I went to see was Ben Edlund, uh, creator of The Tick, who had grown up uh, basically a couple towns over from me. And I had seen him at uh, New England Comics. Uh, that's a That was a local chain of comic book stores in Massachusetts that published The Tick. And I had gone and like met him when it debuted. And um, there'd been a few more issues, so I went and got them signed by him. And just sort of like, I was in awe. Like he wasn't considered like a big celebrity then. But he had uh, ambitious goals. You know, he was going to um, college to study filmmaking. I don't think he actually ended up finishing his degree because he was able to parlay his work in The Tick into an animated show, which in turn allowed him to move to Hollywood. And he really started making a name for himself working on as a writer on like some animated movies. And then he uh, started working for Joss Whedon on Angel. He, he wrote for Angel for at least a season. Um, and then he became a producer and a writer for many years on Supernatural. Um, so he's, uh, he's, he's worked in the industry. Like, uh, he, he accomplished his goals. He, he wrote an episode or two of Venture Brothers because he knows those guys. He's the only one aside from Venture Brothers creators to actually um, write an episode. So, um, you know, someday I'll definitely do an episode on on Ben Edlund. Um, he's somebody that I've always sort of looked up to as a hero because he was a local guy, a few years older than me from like a town a couple over. And it just sort of made me realize like, oh, anybody can sort of become successful in the entertainment industry if they have a good idea and they're a good person and stuff. And he was so friendly 
and open that like you know he really I, I don't know, he struck me as a really nice individual, and so it's just nice to see a nice person succeed. Um, so yeah, like definitely a, a personal hero of mine is Ben Edlund. Um, his work means a lot to me, and I've followed his career ever since, and I'm sure I always will. I'm just curious at this point, because I just sort of feel like in another world, maybe that somehow could have been me I don't know I just that's how it feels you know because he grew up so close to me and he started with such modest origins so that's a story let's see uh, Clay says going to my first comic convention at the end of this month local but we have a writer from Doctor Strange and Defenders showing up well that sounds cool that's cool J Muse is, is here thank you uh, Joseph Meager. Oh, and you're also going to be vending. Well, that's really exciting, Clegg. I hope uh, I hope you have a wonderful time. I've uh, I've definitely uh, tabled at several conventions, and it's, uh, it can be a lot of fun. Um, people come up to you, you know. You get to see the, the people in costumes and and stuff like that uh, come by you, which is really nice. Um, I I love doing stuff like that. Maybe someday I'll, um, I don't know, just create some bonus content where I show you guys some of that stuff that I've, you know, talked about, like, you know, as a self-publisher, just to sort of show you what I've done and, and, and sort of talk about what that experience was like. I don't know if that would be worthwhile to anyone out there, but uh, it's definitely something I could do. I, I've got a lot of books that I've self-published and had, you know, printed and stuff, um, all sorts of stuff superheroes and uh, sci-fi and horror yeah nonfiction too me 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 why do I talk about myself so much on oh right my channel I'll keep doing that <laughs> I know this is like my channel and people ask me questions and then I like start telling a story and I'm like, whew, this sounds so egocentric. And then I have to remind myself like, well, no, it, it is my channel. So <laughs> it's normal to talk about myself in this context. <laughs> Somewhat normal. Uh, any other good questions? I feel like this is um, taking me down some interesting paths. I feel like I've told at least a little bit of stories this time instead of just uh, muttering about, like, my favorite Superman artist was Kurt Swan. I don't know. I don't know that he was, by the way. Let me think. Kurt Swan's definitely a fantastic Superman artist. I don't know. Like, who would be my favorite, actually? When I was a kid, it was definitely John Byrne. Um, yeah, there's been so many great artists that have worked on him since. It's, it's really hard to say. I, I've decided that my personal favorite Superman story is All-Star Superman by Frank Whiteley and Grant Morrison. That That's my personal favorite. Um, yeah, it definitely speaks to me, and I just feel like it's so well executed tell something kind of original and new with superman uh, it's hopeful it's, it's just nice i like it a lot i also like uh the stuff that alan moore wrote for superman um what do you get for the man who has everything and whatever happened to the man of tomorrow uh, those are both really interesting. Alan Moore sort of became heralded for his literary uh, work of of Watchmen so so early in his career, really, that like people forget that he did some damn awesome superhero stories. Um, some good stuff on Superman and, of course, Swamp Thing. Uh, yeah, he 
he's uh he really uh when he wants to do superheroes i feel like uh you know mainstream superheroes i felt like he was always very respectful and came up with really cool ideas Um, let's see what is something you'd like to see in a DC movie personally I'd like to see them do Rock of Ages be fantastical Rock of Ages could be very cool I agree with that um, I also think that like you know the um, the JLA story where um, the White Martians were revealed to be portraying like sort of new superheroes and there was a matchup for like every different uh, JLA member. I think that that was a really cool, fun story that could like work very well on screen because you don't really have to spend too much time defining each villain. It, you just know that they're an opposite. And uh, I think that that could be very cool. Any excitement over Gunn heading up the new Suicide Squad? Uh, he's certainly more than capable of doing a good job on it. Um, I guess I feel like before they get someone really good to do a good movie, I'd, I'd sort of love to hear them just announce, we're starting fresh. Um, because it's... It, look, getting one nice movie is fantastic, but getting several nice movies that are connected does pay off you know Marvel's shown that and I would love it if DC could get get it together and, and approach things that way uh, it doesn't seem super likely so fine I'll take I'll take James Gunn doing a, a new new approach on Suicide Squad I'll gladly take that um, I really hope that Marvel uses whatever his script for uh, Guardians 3 was just for like you know sort of a sense of continuity and, and, and allow it to end in a similar manner to however it started. There was an intended plan. I would like to see it go that way. We'll see. I'm hopeful. It's always interesting drawing sort of a sort of a latex or black leather like trying to figure out exactly how you want to approach the texture and shadows I'm trying to go for a very simple open style with minimal highlights along certain edges um, that's my goal anyway we'll see if it uh, if it pays off take a look and see uh, if there's any new questions that can send me in a new new direction cheesy question if you could have any superpower what would it be you know sometimes I think about this uh, like as a daydream to help myself fall asleep I'll just sort of like muse on on what it would be like and I sort of come up with, I come down to like three different powers one I feel like shape shifting would be tremendously useful and interesting in the real world like if you could just for like an hour or two see what it's like to walk around the city as the rock or a politician or something like that that would be interesting um, but it does sort of tend to almost lend itself to a super villains power because you know you're 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 doing identity theft with 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 that so that's a little weird um, Telekinesis, like, you know, somebody like Jean Grey has, where she can make herself fly and easily, like, throw, you know, pretty big objects around. Like, I think that that would be interesting just because no one would really even know that it's you. Um, and it would also be amazing to fly. But if you could sort of manipulate time like the Flash does, if you could, like, move at super speed and, and not be adversely affected... Um, 
feel like that would be like really interesting and allow you to accomplish uh, quite a bit. I don't know. So those are some of the ones that I that I muse about. But uh, what about all of you? They they say that like you know, um, flight tends to be the most commonly selected one. Um, if I was being completely just realistic, like I wanted to sort of just operate in the real world, there's no other superheroes or anything, I would probably choose uh, Doug Ramsey, a.k.a. Cypher's mutant ability of being able to instantly learn any other language. Programming, foreign languages, all that stuff. I think that that would be so useful and you could be so successful if you could communicate with anyone. Um, I think that that would be uh, pretty amazing. So I don't think that's a cheesy question. I think that, you know, for a comic book uh, YouTube channel, that's a, that's a really fun one. Uh, thank you very much for the question. I appreciate it. Let's see if I've got any other good questions in there. Um, shape shifting would also help you as an artist because you can feel the pose that you're drawing better. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Jojo says mind reading or telepathy. Vivi says I'd love to have animal man's powers. That would be pretty amazing, wouldn't it? You could fly like a bird, have the strength of a rhinoceros. Who knows? Yeah, all sorts of amazing things. Um, huh, Germ Germ likes the idea of having Venom's powers. Josiah Alcombe says time manipulation. Uh, Brendan says, was there someone you knew as a kid who got you into comics? Yes, yes. That's so interesting to think about. That's not something I think about all the time, but there totally was. I made uh, a new friend in third grade. His name was Bill, and Bill was into all sorts of stuff that I just uh, hadn't been exposed to. Uh, one of them was comics. Uh, another was uh, hip-hop. I really fell in love with uh, like Run DMC and a lot of early hip-hop bands. Um, he introduced me to that. He was into pro wrestling. That I didn't connect with as much. He was also really into Japanese anime that had been imported here, like um, Voltron and Guy King. So um, that was interesting. But mostly it was comic books that uh, he got me into. And I, and I really, yeah, that was, that was pretty awesome to, um, to be introduced. That was around third grade that I really started to uh, learn what they were. And I thought there was some really cool stuff. So there was somebody that got me into comics. Um, I ended up getting myself more into comics when I, I think it was like the following year or something like that, I saw a Transformers comic. And that was like the first comic I bought for myself. I was really into Transformers at the time. Um, so anyway. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, yeah, it's always somebody else that gets you into something, right? Like you, it, it's 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 rare that you completely in a vacuum discover something, and no one had like sort of set you up to be interested in that beforehand. Uh, so yeah, Bill was ahead of his time in terms of some of the things that he uh, he was into because that was the uh, the early '80s, and uh, he was into all sorts of interesting things that would sort of go on to become much more popular later. cousin in the U.S. had tons of books. That's Faction Fusion. Yeah, it's always somebody else, isn't it? Voodoo Zombie says, I got into comics because my dad used to read heavy metal and vampirella and stuff like that. And maybe I was a little too young for that. But yeah. Leroy Jenkins. Wow. A meme among memes. Welcome. Uh, says, I would try to totally copy Art Adams' X-Men covers when I was younger. Hey, that's a great way to start when you're young. Uh, copying at that age is, is a fantastic way to become familiar with 
techniques and what works and what doesn't. Uh, that's a great artist to have started copying from. I believe I used to try to copy from um, Mike Zek when I was younger. Um, and I'm glad that I did. I also then started to copy from like Jim Lee and Todd McFarlane and uh, Rob Liefeld. So that probably didn't all help me as much actually because I was really focused more on the the technique than the underlying form and structure and storytelling but hey I was a kid and have somebody telling me that that might not help you long term time is it how long have I been going oh only 50 minutes great I feel like I can do this a little longer and I'm gonna record uh, the next episode of comic tropes after I wrap this up and uh, so yeah this is that that's productive I feel good about that have you ever read a comic you loved as a kid then thought it was pretty terrible when you went back and reread it um yeah kind of a bunch of the um, Transformers stuff that I was really into when I first discovered comics. I've kind of gone back and it's Some of it's okay. and Some of it's pretty mundane. Like I don't think that there was a lot of passion all the time uh, With all of the stuff that I was reading back then So that that that's an example of something that I went back to and I was like eh, Why was I so into this? <laughs> I'm sure that happens to lots of us. I used to think Youngblood was the best. Boy, was I wrong. Well, who knows? <laughs> J. Andrew World says, When I did meet Todd McFarlane, he told me to trace comics by artists I didn't like, and I shot back, like Rob Liefeld, Todd McFarlane busted a gut laughing at that. That's kind of funny. That's pretty funny. So while I'm sort of okay with how this drawing is going, I, I do already sort of have one problem. And uh, I don't think I made Storm quite look uh, black. I feel like uh, this is just sort of a generic pretty lady, and uh, that wasn't my goal. Um, so that's too bad. I, I, I don't know. Um, there's a uh, learning step for me. I uh, didn't quite get what I wanted out of this. So be it, right? Um, next time I would just simply focus a little bit more carefully on the features when I'm at the uh, penciling stage. I would just uh, try to uh, try to focus on it. You know, Storm is drawn pretty unique. She she's not really drawn with much in the way of stereotypical black features. Her eyes are usually either white or sometimes they're drawn, you know, sort of almond shaped with blue irises. Um, so she, she's sort of a unique character like that because of being a mutant. But at the same time, you know, she is 
black and I don't think I really nailed that at all here um, I think that like a good colorist would would make this look like storm but it doesn't necessarily in black and white do anything to be special especially storm like um, anyway hope that makes sense So today is National Mental Health Awareness Day, and uh, I'll just take two seconds to say um, to everybody out there, and I don't want to take too long, but because I don't want to be preachy, but take care of yourselves. Um, I suffer from depression, and it can get, be pretty bad sometimes, and uh, ultimately, you know, you, you have to be responsible for taking care of yourself. You don't want to you don't want to make that a, somebody else's responsibility or burden because uh, at the end of the day it, it's your responsibility but it's something that we can all handle and and you can always reach out for help and I just hope that everybody out there is, is taking care of themselves and if you're in here I at least care about you and I'm sure that there's lots of other people that do too but I I'm very grateful for the followers that I've uh, been gaining I'm very grateful for the conversations that we're able to have about um, things that we're all passionate about. So, um, yeah, I care about you, and I hope that uh, hope that all of you out there are doing well, taking care of yourselves as well, taking care of those around you, your family members and your loved ones. So hopefully that wasn't too preachy, but it just popped into my head, and I, it, it's worth mentioning every once in a while. We, we shouldn't ignore people that are in pain. Classic Storm is good, but Punk Rock Storm is better. Okay, yep. Let's see. Drawing people of color is super tough. I used to get, I used to get, uh, or I get used to drawing Caucasian people, but different races are a lot of fun to draw. Of course. Well, everybody, every individual should, should look a little different. And, you know, like, there are artists that um, do, do that very well, and there's artists that um, do, do well sometimes, but not always. Um... I've always appreciated um, George Perez, I think, is a very good artist. Um, he's, he's really good at solid storytelling, and he's also really good at making every character look unique and, and, and special. Um, and he can definitely do other races. There's one thing he does that's like a pet peeve of mine. It's so stupid to get hung up on because at the end of the day, who cares? But he draws Thor with sort of like a little button nose, you know, just like this this like tiny little like sort of bump on his nose like he's just got like a cute little cute little nose and I'm like this guy is in you know Marvel Comics continuity like a big tough Viking I just don't feel that that nose fits that character the way George Perez draws him the rest of Thor looks good he just looks too youthful to me you know he looks too youthful and I think that like Storm Storm I'm drawing Storm I think that Thor shouldn't be drawn old per se, but he is very old. He's he's an immortal god, so he should he should have some gravity behind him. And I don't think that that little little kid's nose um, does him any favors. So that's my what do you call it? That's my pet peeve of the day. What were you doing? Cross hatching, Pissy? Yeah, that's what I Yeah, that can take a long time. Never give up. Do you want to show anyone what you're drawing? Um, or do you want to just keep working? Sure. So my fiance is in here drawing with me. That that's fun. Oh oh this is an interesting piece. All right. Okay, yeah, I, I don't know if you could overhear her um, with this mic, but she said she started this on Tranquil, and I can definitely see that, and then Flowing inspired her to sort of like revisit it and, and continue. There, there's a lot to like about this. The, the person it's, itself is fantastic. There's a lot of emotion here. 
I wish my pieces had this much sort of emotion behind them. I love it. I love it. Yeah, okay, so I'll read off uh, what people are saying. Um, let's see. It's looking really cool. Oh, nice. That looks so cool. Amazing. That looks Giger-esque. Me likey. That is so dope. Damn, that is amazing. Well done. Awesome. That's a really great image. That drawing is nuts. What the fuck? How is that so good? Couples who draw together stay together. Or start your own. Chrissy's a painter and an artist, and Chrissy says thank you. And I think that those are sincere compliments because they, you know, they, they they came here for me. They didn't come here. They are not. They are talking specifically about what I just showed them. It it does look really interesting and cool. It looks uh, you 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 definitely get like a sense that you want to start seeing that in like color, and you're sort of I I, I don't know I I get the same feeling that I do when I see a good painting. I'm curious what's happening just beyond the borders to, to have start to have created this. Um, that's what I think about. Yeah, uh, dope Arino. <laughs> I like the realism of the being and the fantasy behind it. So, so you're still getting compliments. That's so nice. I wish I could draw like her and him. <laughs> Thank you, Smirsh Tatter. You're a good artist yourself. Thank you for the for the pieces that you submitted for fa for fan art sometimes i feel like that's not a uh, the right thing to call what people submit because obviously you guys uh, are uh, talented artists but i term it fan art just because I, I i want it to be about the show as compared to just showing somebody's portfolio <laughs> which by the way i as the show has grown i get more and more requests to do things by the way the light has significantly changed in the yes, last couple of minutes could you just hit that light switch is that it all right that's a little better a little warmer all of a sudden like the sun just i guess went behind some clouds and got dark um by the way shirley also loves your art <laughs> she's biased <laughs> um what was i saying um i forget oh getting requests oh so of course like the channel grows it's it's to be expected i get plenty of uh social media and emails saying like i've got an app that i want you uh to sponsor your show with or will you like give what, what does it take to do this and so far i just haven't been wowed by any of the products maybe i'd do a small sponsorship just mention something if it didn't take up too much time i don't want to I don't want to slow the show down with anything like that. It had to, and it has to be a product that I sincerely believe all of you would potentially be interested in. So probably not anytime soon am I ever going to have a sponsorship deal. But that said, I certainly get questions like that all the time. And I'm I also just get people constantly saying like, "Hey, I'm thinking of self-publishing a book. Will you review it on your show?" And I'm like, it could be the best book ever. I'm probably not going to review it on comic tropes because that's not what comic tropes is, is it? Like I'm talking about comic book history or how the industry works or a very well established artist and what their techniques are. I'm not just reviewing anybody's book off the street. So it could be a fantastic fantastic book but that's not what I do with my show so when I get asked that I'm thinking well I don't think you're actually watching my show if that's what you're asking so I sort of get annoyed when I get like um, uh, questions like that like you know will you review my uh, book that I'm about to put up on Kickstarter and it's like N no why would I that's not what I do I hope that doesn't sound rude, but like, it just feels like to me, like the person isn't really paying attention to what I do. That's my take on things anyway. Let's see here. Gonna just make sure I don't go past that line. Um, keep it authentic. Thank you, Narlston New. Chris, can you draw Judge Dredd? I think you could draw it good. Yeah, I actually uh, probably will. Uh, uh, that's a character I really do like, and I, and I probably will draw him. For Inktober? For Inktober, yes, yeah, specifically. 
And uh, yeah, I just get so many of those requests these days. Will you review my comic on your show? What did I have? I had one guy say like, um, he's, he had a drawing, just a good drawing. And, um, and I'm not trying to put this guy on blast, but he was like, will you do an episode about this drawing? I was like, oh, uh, was it published or something? No, no I just did it and, uh, and it's for sale. Like the original is for sale. And I want to do an episode so that like people know that it's for sale. I was like, uh-huh. He's like, I could even write the episode. You could just do it. I was like, <laughs> like, what about my show made it seem like I was just like looking to do commercials for other people's things that they have for sale? Like, are people going to just start going like, hey, I've got, um, I've got a Nintendo 64. Um, I'm going to write the ad copy. Can you just like, uh, you know, announce to your audience that I've got a Nintendo 64 for sale? I was like, what? Where is this coming from? Like, when did my show just... I don't get it. I don't get where that I, that comes from. Like, what what about my show made you think that I wanted to start plugging drawings that people have for sale? And, and then, like, do I does my show seem like I, I have a team of writers and I just am up there, like, talking? No, this is all my opinions. This is my opinions, and like, yeah, it's just so weird. Like, that was, the, that was probably the weirdest requests. I'm like, you know, maybe I just didn't understand what he was getting at, but uh, no. <laughs> I I was like, if you want to mention it on social media, I could um, I could like retweet it or something. You know, like I'm not against doing that for people, but it's just like I I'm not gonna dedicate an episode of my show to like what you have for sale very strange all right see you Shirley have I ever okay all lucky seven says have you used any photos as reference for your drawings yeah definitely I do it a lot um, I uh, I do it more than I want to to be honest um, I, I I prefer to like you know I go to like live drawing stuff where I'm just drawing a person in front of me I like doing that um, when I'm doing when I'm doing like a comic book like panel to panel thing I feel like it it's hard to use reference in those situations because you're gonna get locked into a certain pose or your person isn't gonna look consistent but yeah I do use reference um, especially when I'm just doing sort of like a pinup like this I will definitely use reference um, which is interesting because like a lot of people didn't really understand my argument um, in my Greg Land video. I'm not against using reference at all. Uh, I'm not. I, I just feel that it can become a crutch. Not that you can't produce a good image with it, but that like there are certain things you can be doing when you're using it that will like impede your storytelling, not like how well you produce an individual piece of art, but your storytelling within comics. That was my argument anyway. Um, I think most people did get it. So I don't think I was unclear, but I think a lot of people didn't get it. They thought that I was just trying to shit on Greg Land for his particular approach. And that's not, that's not exactly right. Um, that's why I tried to show his artwork throughout his entire career, including his early days. Uh, so anyway, and there's plenty of artists that use a lot of reference and, and make it look good. I think that Tony Harris and Brian Hitch will use reference, but it still looks really good. <sighs> Let's see, drawing hands is so hard. Yeah, it can be, B. Dan Riley. Um, one thing you can do that can like help if you, if you want to take the time is you take like a big thick Sharpie and you divide your hand up into like almost squares, like draw like a thick line across the knuckles, draw like this into like one piece, draw like your thumb into like a couple sections. And then as you like turn it and stuff, you can almost just see them as blocks. You could see your own hand as, as, as simple blocks and how they arrange with each other. And once you can like view them as blocks, that can really help you move forward. So that's just something if you, if you have the time to do something like that, that is a technique that can um, help you get better at hands. 
Denai Moore says, Greg Land's Nightwing art was so great and you showed how drastically his art changed. Thank you. And some people prefer it that way. So you know what? That's fine. If that's what they want, they're fine. It just doesn't work for me. Uh, to be honest, drawing feet is way worse than drawing hands. Um, maybe. Maybe. Have you met a mean or rude comic creator? Have I met a mean or rude one? I don't think I have in person. No, I'm trying to think. I don't think, I don't think there's any comic creator that... Well, okay, I, I do have a story. I have a story. A Todd McFarlane story. So, again, I went to a comic convention when I was young. This is actually, I think, a different convention, but it was still in Boston. And... Um, Todd McFarlane was going to be there. What year did he put out Spider-Man? Not Amazing Spider-Man, but just Spider-Man number one. I want to say it was somewhere around 1990. Okay? That sounds right. I think it was 1990. And he was appearing at a local Boston Comic Con. And I was a big fan at this point. Okay? So I went to go see him. And it was like maybe the second convention I'd ever been to. And I was definitely like a little confused and a little overwhelmed. And I was there with another friend of mine. We're pretty young, okay? We're pretty young. Um, we were looking around for like where Todd McFarlane is signing. You know, we're wandering around this convention. and Whoa, it's so big, blah, blah, blah. We find it. We find it, okay? Long, long line. We get in line. And we wait in line for like two hours. And when we get to the front uh, or get close to the front of the line, um, it's announced, okay, Todd McFarlane is about to start his panel and the line will just like end here. But like you all have your ticket numbers. We'll pick back up after the, the, the panel. Wait a minute. Ticket numbers? I thought that this was like free. I started asking like the people before and after and stuff. And they're like, yeah, it is free, but you had to get a ticket. You just had to like walk over, get a ticket, get in line. It and it wasn't like they were ordered by number. You just had to have a ticket. And so they the, the they were just trying they were saying to us like, remember your number and who's in front and who's behind you. Just have your ticket. All right, well we didn't get tickets. Uh ooh, I hope this isn't gonna be a big deal. Um and they said that the person the last person in the line would be like five behind us so they like just sort of like counted out a certain number of people and they were like you people will get your book signed everybody else as soon as the panel's over get back in line we'll continue i was confused i was very confused because i was young and um so uh we we get up my friend and i uh, i think his name was doug and we get up to um to todd mcfarlane and we say you know i'm sorry sir we didn't know that we were supposed to pick up a a, a ticket you know, we've been waiting in line for two hours. Will you sign our books? And he goes, hmm, no. Move on. We were devastated. We were devastated. So, I mean, I don't know. Was he was he right to enforce that? You know, maybe. Um, I wasn't trying to, to cheat or anything like that. You know, we didn't skip in line or anything. Like I said, it wasn't a numbered line. And the tickets were free. They were just giving them out, I think, to um, just say, like, okay, we're going to give out, you know, like a thousand tickets during this hour, maybe a thousand hours during a different hour, just to sort of keep the line manageable. I think that was the goal. Um, anyway, we didn't get our we didn't get our signature that day. He just said no. Was that rude? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I was definitely at the time kind of like hurt. And honestly, like I was so hurt that I was almost like ready to give up on comic books, okay? And my friend and I were just like, we didn't know what to do next because that's kind of the whole reason we came there. But we had to like, you know, we were getting picked up by our parents and we didn't, ha we didn't have like all day just to like get back in line or anything. So we sort of like, the, 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 the panel was like literally through a door that we were standing right next to. So we just sort of like walked into it in the back and we're like trying to think of like what to do next. Like, should we go shopping like on the mezzanine or should we just leave now and just like walk around Boston? And um, a guy, just an older guy, not like old, just older than us was just like, hey, how are you guys doing? You know, what are you here for? 
oh, we came to get, you know, a signature by Todd McFarlane. Sure, sure. Oh, yeah, everybody's here. He's like, I, I work in comics, too. Oh, you do? Yeah, I'm working on, like, a uh, Punisher Daredevil story. And he was like, so he just, like, really kindly just started a chat with us telling us about, like, his idea for a comic and all this like cool stuff about what it was like to sort of work for Marvel at the time and stuff. And it like totally re-excited me about comics because I was like, wow, this guy seems really nice and friendly and he's got like a cool idea and he was able to get Marvel to like accept it. And guess what? I was young. I didn't ask. I don't think I asked him what his name was and I forget. And I... I've never been a hundred percent sure who that man was. And he like, he literally single handedly got me right back into comics when I was just about to just say F comics, you know, I was about to just give up on him because I was so sort of hurt by like how this experience was. And he, and, and this man, like I, I owe him so much because I've, I've read so many wonderful comics and I, and I love the medium. I was very new to it at the time as like a young kid and I just don't know who to thank. I don't know who this guy was. Like I said, I, he did some sort of like either a graphic novel or a prestige format book. It would have come out somewhere around 1990, 1991. But I'm not 100% sure what it is. What comic was I trying to get signed by McFarlane? Uh, Spider-Man number one. Like with the silver or gold cover. Yeah. So anyway, that was uh, that was my story of like, it, it, you know, you said, have I ever dealt with a rude creator? Not really. Um, I I wish Todd had like, you know, been a little kinder and understanding of like a thirteen year old that was confused like at his second ever comic book convention. Um, but he was certainly under no obligation to do so. Um, I admit that like, you know, we we didn't uh, get the tickets properly. You know, we, we, we were very confused about that. We did not know that we had to have tickets. But we waited for two hours, and it would have been nice for him to just go, all right, you know, get it right next time. But who knows? Maybe that wouldn't have been fair to people behind us. I don't know. I was too young to, like, really put everything into context. So I hope that's at least an interesting story. You think so? Okay, thank you. I'll uh, take a look at questions in just a moment. All right. Do you prefer figure drawing or portrait? Uh, figure drawing. I like being timed and stuff. Hello, Mycroft. Uh, you're a clever man. <laughs> um, Mycroft Holmes is here. Uh, let's see. I think I wasn't even born. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm an old. Connor Woods is here. Seems like a real bummer, but at least you got a good experience. Yeah, I did. I did. Um, let's see. Do you enjoy the early image comics? I think it's pretty rude for him to do that. I did enjoy the early ones. Like I say, I was like around 13 or 14 at that point, somewhere around there, um, probably 14. And and I, and I it was exciting to me at the time. So yeah, I did. Have you received any bizarre comics yet? I think I've received one, but I haven't been able to um, go to the uh, address that they're all being shipped to and, and open it up yet. So I've only received one so far. Um, somebody meant to send another one, but... Um, accidentally sent the wrong thing. It wasn't a comic book. So getting that resolved. <laughs> uh, hope I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of crazy stuff people come up with. Let's see. What are some good nonfiction comics? Mouse is great. I love nonfiction comics. Um, Persepolis is uh, quite good. I definitely recommend that one. Um, I think that uh, this Tetris by Box Brown is a 
fascinating look at the history of Tetris and the people that created it and how it came to the to America. Um, I think uh, there's so many good nonfiction comics. There's one about the Green River Killer written by the son of one of the detectives that, that brought him in. That was pretty fascinating. Um, oh, the March Trilogy. Uh, the March Trilogy is, is pretty amazing about the uh, march over the... Um, the bridge in uh, Selma, that's pretty fantastic. That's maybe like among the absolute best nonfiction books. What else is really good um, for nonfiction? I like nonfiction. Um, I don't know. Nothing. Uh, uh, wait a minute. I know. Uh, My Friend Dahmer by Durf Factor. That's a pretty interesting one. Uh, Blankets by Craig Thompson. Someone suggested. Love Blankets by Craig Thompson. Fantastic, fantastic nonfiction book. Yes. Um, somebody suggests Facts from Sarajevo by Joe Kubert. Very good one. Oh, I know another really good one. Um, I told you, I like nonfiction books. Um, I'm just trying to think. Guy Delisle. Guy Delisle is a cartoonist. Uh, he's a Canadian that has worked for an animation studio. And one of his books especially is good. I like all of his books, but he's got one, uh, Pyongyang. And it is about how his Canadian animation studio actually outsourced animation to a North Korean studio. Yes, North Korea actually does some limited hand-drawn animation. And they, they obviously will work for very cheap. And somebody from the animation studio had to supervise. So it was this guy, Guy Delisle. And he lived in North Korea for... I don't know whether it was like six months or a year, but you know, it was an extended period for his job. And it is amazing to see in like a, somebody from the West give their honest opinion of what it's like over there. Cause it is not great. It is not great at all. Uh, yeah. Voodoo zombie says Pyongyang is a masterpiece. I read it very funny. It is. There's lots of funny stuff. It's real life. It wasn't like he was, you know, in trouble or anything. He was, he was working there. Um, but it is, it is nutty. You know, um, I'm getting close to being done on this piece, I think. I'm, let me, um, let me just sort of do something on this cape and then I'm, I'm going to do my thing that I've started to get into during these live streams. I'm going to, I'm going to use some of my Copic grays to, um, add a little extra definition to it. I've just been having a lot of fun doing that. So um, I'm gonna do that, um, and then we'll uh, we'll call this one because I do need to, as I said, uh, work on the comic tropes episode this week. <laughs> this is like, this is what I'm doing that's not work, and it isn't work, but it is. It does use energy and resources and time. You know what I mean? So when this month ends, it will be. So nice to get that little bit of a break. Um, all of a sudden, I'll only have to do like an episode a week for November. Wow, what a treat! I've been um I've been thinking about like uh, doing something for the end of the year on comic tropes, but I'd be curious to see whether it's really anything that resonates with anyone here. Um, on my Patreon page. I sometimes allow people within a certain tier to vote on a top topic. I was thinking of opening something like that up to absolutely everybody, like not on Patreon, just like I'd somehow do it like, you know, through the channel or online for just like one time, like let, let people vote on um, a topic to do for the end of this year. Would that be something that's like fun though? Would that be something that interests anybody? To get to like, you know, I would basically have a list of three, maybe four topics, and then you would all get to just sort of put your vote in if if you were so inclined. So maybe that's too limited, but but that that's what it would have to be if I did this. And I was just curious if that was something that sounded fun to anybody. Uh, let's see. Tomorrow is cruel. The suggestion is cruel. I would do Veronica for Marchie. <laughs> That's clever. That would be fun for sure, says All Lucky Seven. Okay. Oh, wow. See, Kim, you're so generous. 
I know. Check out Prisoners of Gravity. Um, tell you what. I'll do it right now since you sent the super chat. Uh, let me go to... Uh, hold on. Did I get a call? How did I get a call? All right. <laughs> Open up YouTube. Prisoners of Gravity. Prisoners of Gravity. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Watchmen, Harlan Ellison, Jack Kirby, Neil Gaiman, Alan Moore. All right. I'll give this a watch. This is cool. Let me see. I'll start with the Jack Kirby one. Thank you, C. Kim. Appreciate the reminder. How has Marvel not hired you? <laughs> yeah, they've not hired me because they've got plenty of other uh, professionals uh, in their employ. They're, 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 they're doing just fine by their by what they want to do. So, yeah, I don't think that they're going to come knocking on my door anytime <laughs> too soon. We'll see. You never know, right? Maybe tomorrow they'll just go... YouTubers, that's that's what people want to read. They want to read uh, not quite proven YouTubers. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use a mid-range warm gray for some of this cape. Possibly for all of the black leather. I'm just thinking it through. Probably use a lighter one for this. Actually, you know what? This one's not bad for the rest of the leather. Let me go a little darker. Like a W6? Do I have a W4? I do have a W4. All right. Can we see some of your non pinup drawings? Um. At some point, I don't think I have anything in this room that's like, you know, sequential or anything like that. I've definitely got some that are way sketchier, uh, you know, just doodles. But uh, do I actually even have that? I think I have that anyway. Um, so give me a moment here. And actually, I should take a moment to draw in some rain lines and stuff like that, because the whole premise is flowing. She's in the standing in sort of a rainstorm of her own creation, so I should probably represent that. Hold up, what's Inktober, says Caesar. Uh, Inktober is kind of like what it sounds like. It's uh, drawing every day of October. Have you played around with coloring, Chris? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. I've, I've colored some stuff, uh, mostly digital. Um, for, for some of these days, I'll use Copics just for fun. But um, I'm trying to think if I've done anything that's been published that I've colored. Um, Hmm. I I must have with uh, like some self-published stuff, but I don't I can't think of it off the top of my head. But I must have. All right, I'm gonna go down one warm to W three. Let's see what W three looks like next to this. Not too bad. I think I'll just have to darken the cape one more so that it stands out a little bit more. But this is what I'll use for uh, the highlights on the leather. What program do you use for digital painting? Photoshop. Uh, I like working in Photoshop quite a bit. Um, it's like a tablet. I have a Surface right now, and it's uh, 
the, the touch sensitivity is actually quite impressive. Um, so with a pen, I, I feel like I can do a pretty good job coloring um, in that. I like working in that. I think that that's pretty much the industry standard is Photoshop. Um, maybe a few folks that are using something like Manga Studio, but uh, I think most people that are doing digital coloring in the industry are using Photoshop. Okay, let me pause here to go with something a little darker. Yeah. I think I needed a little more of a contrast there. All right, let's see. Uh, Diego says, do you have comic tropes on Ultimate Spider-Man? No, at least not yet. Um, definitely something I'm thinking about. So stay tuned is all I can say for now. Uh, definitely something I've been thinking about. <coughs> Sounds like you need another lozenge. Guess I'm getting a little quiet, probably just uh, a little tired, I suppose. But I do really enjoy sitting down, drawing comics, talking to all of you. So appreciate you uh, spending some time with me. I don't think anything different. Go with the lighter one. Uh, let's see. Did not know you were an artist. Big fan of your videos. Keep up the good work. Well, I, I, don't, I mean, I like to draw. Uh, I don't know how good an artist I am. I'm not trying to pretend that I'm a professional or that there's that much that I can t tell anyone. I'm just, I like to draw, you know. Uh, so when Inktober comes around, I just consider that uh, an excuse to work on uh, improving. enjoy drawing very much. So speak up. Who all out there enjoys drawing? And who enjoys a different aspect of comics? Maybe maybe writing, maybe even lettering, coloring. Um, just curious. Uh, speak up. Let me know. What, what, what aspect do you, if any, if any, what aspect do you enjoy working on? Kevin Maley says drawing. Not surprised there. You're a good artist. <laughs> uh, I would say that I enjoy drawing, but I guess I've always sort of considered myself more of a writer. I, I spend more time writing. Uh, that's just me.
What? You like storyboarding, Chrissy? Hmm. I've done a little bit of that. It's fun. I agree. Seeing if by any chance I have something lighter than this to do one more thing here. I do. We have a W0. J. Andrew Wald drawing. Yep. Danny Moore. I like to drawing and painting in high school. I gave up because I was always comparing myself to other people. That is one of the toughest things, isn't it? Lots of people here saying drawing. Uh, Zarkel Nito Pants, Caesar Vidal, Jacob Roller. Uh, wow, this is interesting. There are too many artists that draw Storm like a white chick with a tan. Disappointing. No, I agree. And it was, um, I don't know if you caught me saying, like it was one of my concerns that like I, I didn't really accomplish tonight is, is making her look like not white. And I don't think I quite accomplished that actually. So that's a little frustrating. Yeah, I think all the cats are getting hungry. It's almost feeding time. I know I've gone quiet. It's because I'm just sort of touching up the, this like part and I'm almost done. And bear with me here. two here just to darken a little bit up but I'm pretty close to done and then I can uh, see if there's any last questions of the day That's probably about as good as I'm going to be able to get it. Just going to, I think I've got a blending tool here. Yeah. Colorless blend. I feel like I need to just sort of. I don't know. It's fine, I suppose. Yeah, blender's working. I I um. I smeared a small amount of ink, and I thought that I could sort of clear it up a little bit with this, but that's not really working. So, whatevs. That's that's just how it is. All right.
Storm's costume in the X-Men movies were boring. Well, everybody's costume was kind of boring in the X-Men movies, wasn't it? Except for like here and there, like uh, here and there they added a little color. Like the first uh, X-Men New Class movie I, I thought did an okay job. So, oh, you know what? Excuse me. I keep thinking I'm done. I'm really not quite done yet because um, I need to just sort of, it's very important to represent that it's it's raining. So, not quite done yet. Uh, you've got a question. You've still got time to ask it. Um, Wolvie needs his mask. Wolf, yeah, first class is a masterpiece. It's one of the better ones, I think. Um, it's it's closer to what we want out of our X Men movies, I would say. Uh, what? That's probably who it was. They probably left a message. Thanks, Chrissy. So just showing a, a little bit of a sort of, I don't know what you'd call it, maybe a halo or something of water, rainwater uh, sort of spattering. Uh, and then I'm going to just sort of draw a couple lines and make sure I get them straight. Which I didn't there, but that's okay. And I'm trying to put these at sort of uh, asynchronous angles here and there. But just want to start dropping in uh, all sorts of raindrops to really make it look like uh, Storm is in fact standing in a rainstorm that she summoned. That's the whole point of my idea here. Questions. West Coast Avengers was pretty good. Sure, yes, it was. Any other questions? Nope. And if I had a good oval template near me, I'd start drawing intersecting raindrop ripples on the ground. Instead I'll just sort of hint at a few. throw in a few more raindrops. What do you think, folks? Is that starting to look like uh, it's, it's actually raining? I hope. That's the goal. <coughs> All right. I think that'll do it for me for, for this one. Uh, I think that adds a little bit of texture and stuff. Oh, Chrissy wants to show what she's been doing. She's been working. Chrissy did the raindrops much better. That's what I was yeah. trying to. Look at all these intersecting pools of water. Isn't that pretty cool? I think I think it's cool. Maybe I'm biased, but honestly, a big part of why I was initially like fascinated with Chrissy and 
fell in love with her was that I thought she was a great artist. You're getting a lot of nice compliments, Chrissy. Okay. I'll try not to embarrass you, but like, feel free to pull up the video later and if you ever <laughs> want to feel good. Yeah. She's, she's much better with like texture and stuff than I am. Here's my much more sort of open and rounded illustration. Um, but anyway, you got a lot of compliments. Thank you all for the kind words. Uh, the reflection is pretty great. It is, isn't it? Haunting. Haunting, yeah, yeah. There's definitely some real emotion behind hers. I was trying to draw mine in a much more sort of, she's she's enjoying it. She, she's summoning the rainstorm down on her and just sort of like, come to me, come to me. Anyway, uh, both of y'all are great. Thank you for the kind words, folks. I think that'll do it for tonight. Uh, I need to uh, spend some time working on the next Comic Tropes. I think you'll like it. I hope you'll like it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, have you done any original characters? Uh, yes, I'll talk about it someday. Maybe uh, maybe tomorrow night. Uh, maybe tomorrow night would be a good good night to, to, to do that. Keep your pencils sharpened, friends. That's James Gleason's fantastic catchphrase. Uh, mine, I'll lay it on you now because I'm going to take off. Keep reading comics. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for the kind words and the good questions.